Ah, uh, there you are. I was just, uh, well. Hey all, this is Dominic coming at you from Stories by the River. And I'm gonna show you how to expand anamorphic footage within Blender. I've been living with my gloves on, gloves on. I've been living with my knife out under my feet. Well, I've been living with my gloves on. Okay, this is Blender, and all we're doing quickly is get rid of this little blender sign just click around it i'll get rid of it leave the default cube up here is how we change uh kind of window divisions they have some presets i just use a very fast one if you hit that little white boxes there i go to a compositing preset and it brings up a set of windows for me next thing you do is click on this right here use nodes it shows our node layout which is a nice visual representation of your input and output fancy terms and uh, first thing you do is click on this render layer we're not rendering any 3d so we click on it highlight it so it's orange hit delete get rid of it we now go down here hit add and input and we need a input a movie clip and it's not tied to your mouse so you just drop it wherever you want in this case, I'm dropping it there. For our output, we need a composite, which goes to our, our renderer or compositor. And we'll add one more just so we can view everything, called a view node. And that is output viewer. Looks like the compositor. So what this does is, I'll show you in a second. From here, uh, let's just, our movie clip node or input node. Let's hit open, uh, go select your footage. In my case, it's right here because uh, I know what it is by heart, or at least I should. And uh, I take this little yellow, from the yellow, yellow dot that says image, connect my spaghetti noodle right up to the compositor or render, and then I connect my other spaghetti noodle up to the viewer so I can view it. Now I say, hey, you can't view it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, we have to click on backdrop here. Now, middle mouse wheel zooms the nodes in and out. Uh, v, if you hit V, this zooms the actual render window out. If you look, this is still not stretched. Um, this is actually looking like uh, 16 by 9 that hasn't, uh, it is anamorphic, but it hasn't been stretched out to its correct size. That's done very easily. Uh, right here is our render section. Very simple. Um, in the case of me, I have a video card that has GPU that is a little bit faster than my CPU. Um, so uh, first things first. We, I usually render in cycles. You don't have to, you can just leave a default blender uh, render. Uh, but if you have a very fast video card, select cycles renderer. Go over here, select GPU compute. Um, and also uh, just something to remember, if you haven't set it so that you have an OpenCL based card that can do that, um, you can make sure that it's set and usable inside user preferences right here under file under system over here in cycles compute device make sure OpenCL and then select the card you have and then save um, if you haven't already um, then you go over here and just select what you're rendering on I'm going to render on my GPU device um, my footage is 1920 by 1080 they have this little bar that's showing me 50% of that resolution um, just make sure to hit make it 100%. I don't know why they do that. There must be a reason in the rendering world uh, for 3D. Uh, but for now, just sort of ease of use, make sure that's 100%. Um, the anamorphic fo footage is 1.33 times the 1920. So that comes out to 2554, which is our X. And if you look, camera, pers camera perspective has shown it. Um, and if we hit render, just a quick single render, um, here you can scroll out with your middle mouse wheel. It's showing the borders, uh, but not properly stretched. We'll get that in a second. We need one more node to stretch the footage out. So, nice thing about Blender, it shows how it's going to render. We need to add one more node. And that is in the Distort node. And it's called Stretch. Sorry, Scale. I'm wrong. Scale. I call it Stretch, but it's Scale. What I usually do <clears throat> is I reconnect the input uh, to the scale node. I take it away from, let's say, my compositor node, just drag it off of there, and then drag another one from the output of, so that the output of the scale node goes to both your renderer and your viewer, so you're seeing what's happening in real time. 
Um, so one input to the scale node, two outputs from the compositor and the viewer node. So on the scale node itself, make sure to select this, render size, and it'll automatically go to stretch. So if you look now, my footage is stretched out to where it should be. That means it's ready to go, golden. So uh, next, things, next thing here, make sure uh, frames per second is 24 in my case, whatever yours is, make sure it's set to that. Set your output folder. In this case, my output folder is going to be where I, my project files are. So I'm just going to go accept and make sure that that sets where I want it output. Um, I'm going to make this on this uh, drop down here. This is what you want to export as. In this case, you need to export as individual picture files, like if you're doing uh, special effects, but I want to do movie. So I'm going to make it AVI JPEG. Uh, I'm not going to go into the options here, but there's FFmpeg. Uh, so you can do MP4 and other things, but for sake of argument today, maybe I JPEG. I want to make sure it's at 100%, so 100% uh, that I'm outputting for quality. And I am ready to go then. So we can see this r export in real time. One more thing. Uh, my footage is about oh uh, a couple minutes long, so we're talking like 4,000 frames. You can set the end of frames here. It's set automatically to 250, which you can figure 24 divided by 250 gives you that many seconds. Um, in this case, I'm gonna set mine to, and uh, let's say 1200 seconds. I don't wanna see 1200 frames, sorry, of my footage uh, because I don't wanna take all night to do this. So here we go. Now that's set, I have the length of the footage I wanna see. I hit animation button and it starts rendering this out to my output folder. Just to note, this is, uh, this was captured on my LG V10, uh, which I think I mentioned earlier, at 4K at 100 megs a second in an uh, application called Filmic Pro, which is for both uh, uh, iPhone and Android now. Uh, it's version 6, wonderful application for film. So just so you know what I was using, I'm going to uh, speed this up for the sake of time now. This was Open Minded. My name is Dominic Kaiser, and I hope this helps you out. Peace.